We're going to look at how to draw a planet in Desmos. And this planet, I'm just going to make a stylized version of Saturn, and I'm going to use a circle, an ellipse, and also a polygon. The other thing I'm going to do is make an offset so that we can move it up and down and put it inside of a folder. And the ordering is important, so I put the polygon underneath the planet. And if you look, if you put the polygon above the planet, it draws the planet, the orange planet, second. So the polygon will disappear. Same thing with the rings. If I put the rings above the polygon, then the polygon appears over top. And I could put the rings all the way behind it if I wanted to. All right. So let's go ahead and delete this. Now, I put it in a folder, so I'm going to delete the entire folder. Oh, and if you look, when I was dragging that around, somehow that thing escaped. All right, so we're going to start from nothing. So I like to start with the circle. Now it's x squared plus y squared equals r squared. Um, I am putting these in parentheses on purpose because I use the radius of 3. Because we're going to have an offset, we're going to add uh, or subtract a value from x and y, and that'll move the circle around. Okay, so here's our circle. You don't have to choose a radius of three. I am centering it at the origin originally. And let's go ahead and talk about how to offset it. So it's normally x minus h, y minus k. And you can definitely type that in, but you need a h and a k value. You could add a slider uh, for both of these. That's very reasonable. If you're gonna make more than uh, a few values, you can't reuse the letter H and K every time if you want to make other planets with other centers. And so that's why if you noticed on what I had before, I used S sub X and S sub Y. And I was just thinking this is the Saturn center X and the Saturn center Y coordinate. Okay. And then you do have to type in S sub X sub X x and let's say I did a lowercase s I need a capital s probably easier to just do lowercase but I'll just do lower cases here come on all right capitalization does matter okay so I have x minus the coordinate or minus the, the number and, and y minus the other number, that does let me move the circle around, both on the x and the y. All right, I'm going to type in zero because uh, for convenience, it's better to build this around the origin, and then at the very end, we will worry about how to move it around. Okay, the first thing you notice, well, this is not filled in, and it's not orange, so I hold down left click to get the options here. I can make it orange. Um, I could increase the line thickness to maybe uh, 40, maybe make it 4,000, but this, that's not a really good way to uh, achieve filled in. All right, so I really wanna achieve filled in on the inside, so what I'm gonna do is go less than or equal to, and that fills it in. If I would swap the inequality greater than or equal to, it will color or shade the outside of that circle. Uh, but of course, I want to go inside. Uh, I don't want the outer line on here. So again, I'm holding down left click and the line thickness, I'm going to go zero and it will just make the outer line disappear. This is how opaque or how transparent that outer line is. And the fill is 0.4. And when I'm done, I want it to be one, but for now let's go 0.8. And these are uh, values, the fill uh, goes between zero and one. So like 0.5 is half filled in, 0.7, whatever, 70%. Okay, so that's my Saturn right there. You know, I'm just going to go ahead and fill it fully opaque right now. Okay, so that's Saturn. Now, I want to make the ring on here. Now, the ring, if you remember, is not a circle. It's an ellipse. So it's reasonable to start with this right here. 
um, and it just gives you a default color here. Uh, now the ring, I did not fill it in, so I just did equal. Uh, the radius is not going to be correct on here. Uh, we want a bigger radius, so let's just temporarily, I'm just going to put four squared in here. All right, clearly a circle is not going to work for the rings. They need to be an ellipse. All right, how do we make an ellipse? Well, we can rewrite this circle equation. I'm going to divide both sides by four squared. So that means that turns into a one. This term gets divided by four squared, uh, which I'll just type in. Uh, I'll, I'll leave it as a square and four squared. All right, the x divided by four squared. The reason I'm putting these in parentheses is so I can just change that value very easily. All right, now you should go look up the equation of ellipse, but what's underneath x is, and we're just gonna play with this number. This is the, let's call it the x radius. And if I change it to three, you see what happens? Gets a little more narrow, two gets more narrow, one gets more narrow. Now, if I went all the way to zero, you should know you can't divide by zero, but you could make it really small if you wanted to basically have a line so that x width is super tiny. All right, I think four is somewhat reasonable, but what I definitely need to change smaller is that. All right, one, I think I use something close to this. You know, you can get pretty precise here whatever, something like that, whatever you think looks pretty good. Uh, what I did, now I made that line much thicker, so I'm holding down left click, I did blue, uh, I think I used 10, nope, maybe 30, there we go. All right, so let's talk about some drawbacks. If I zoom out, it's always 30 pixels thick. If I zoom in, it's 30 pixels thick. Do you see what happens? At different zoom levels, it looks different. So just keep that in mind. What I'm showing you uh, has that drawback. All right, I have it drawn in front. I could draw it behind, that would be reasonable. Uh, but neither of those are actually what I want. Uh, I left the sliders at the top. I'm just gonna leave them at the top um, doing my drawing below. Okay, so how do we cut off this top part right here? What we're gonna do is use an inequality and Desmos already gets the intersection. All right, and if you look, I really want the Y intersection. So I want Y to be below the Y value right there of 0.54. So that's Y less than 0.54. And look at that, it cuts it off right there. Now we do have a problem that there's gonna be this overlap and you can play around with this value, but again, if you zoom in, it's gonna look different than if you zoomed out. All right, I did come up with a way to make this perfect and we will do that. I'm making it fully opaque with a one now. You could, oh, that's kinda of cool. You could do other things on here, but uh, so I want this to be perfect. I want it to nicely look like it goes behind here. So what I'm gonna do, I'm gonna duplicate this, copy, paste, and I'm going with the same blue. Well, let's leave it green for now. But now I'm gonna go with Y is greater than. All right, so clearly that's not really what I want. Uh, so all I did is I flipped the inequality so I get the upper part that's missing. And I'm actually gonna go Let's go zero, y less than zero. All right, you might be thinking, what the heck, why am I doing this? I think I did 40, yeah. All right, and we'll go fully opaque now. All right, so why? 40, 40. Ah, okay, that's why. If you have the cursor here, it makes it appear thicker than it actually is in the number value. That was throwing me off. All right, so why did I do this? Well, let's take the green and we're gonna put it above the orange. Now, if you notice, the green still appears, but if I click off of it, this is perfectly going behind the planet now. 
And now all I have to do is change the color back to blue. All right, look at that. This is even better Saturn than what we looked at earlier. All right, it's really important that if you want to start playing around with uh, these values, so let's say that you wanted to make this a little wider, you want to maybe make it 4.2. Now you have to change it in two places. You could make another value, uh, maybe SR for the ring. Um, and if you did want to do that, you do S sub R equals uh, 4.2, and then you could substitute in S sub R right here. So that would be a totally reasonable thing to do. Uh, you better do that down here as well. And you can do this for any value that you may want to modify uh, later. So I now can change that, uh, but it's not really what I want. Uh, that's more complicated than I need it, and I'm not going to get that precise with the rings. This is good enough. Okay. So, does the offset work? Look at this. All right, we're able to move this around and in the X and the Y. Uh-oh. What happened? That's strange. I don't know why. Oh, I do know why. Perfect. All right. So great time to explain what in the world is going on. It looks like things just broke. Well, I just modified the Y value of the center. This is, this actually looked kind of cool. You see what's happening here. That Y value that I chose of zero is where those the first and the second part of the ellipse transfer over. And so it's not always at right at zero that I need that to happen. So I think if I make it green, let me put the uh, X at zero so that we're not thinking about that. All right, you can now see it's going green to blue at that. It's, it's where it's transitioning and it's not always at zero, but I want it to be related to the SY value. So now when Y is greater than SY, and when Y is less than SY. Uh, and now when I change SY, if you look, it's now looking consistent right here. Okay, so that is super important right there. And now I can put this back to blue. Okay, so wherever I change these coordinates to, it looks consistent. All right, now I also told you we were gonna put a polygon in here. All right, so before we make a polygon, let's go ahead and put a folder, and I'm gonna call it Saturn. All right, I'm gonna put this folder at the top. Now, right now, nothing is inside the folder. If I wanna start dragging things in, this is hard to see, so I'm gonna zoom in a little bit. When I drag this up here, did you see a, a vertical, a faint gray vertical line appears right here? And if it's not in the folder, the gray line's not there. If it is in the folder, the gray line's there. And also you can see when you hit this triangle, you can see what is in and what is not in the folder. So I'm gonna drag these other ones up and I'm waiting till I see the vertical line there. All right, now if I want, I can just close that up so it just gets out of the way. All right, I'm gonna build a polygon. So how do I do that? There's a few ways. You need a, a bunch of X, Y points. And for me, the easiest way to make these visually is with a table. And I'm just gonna pick some initial uh, value, zero, 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 one, one, zero, and one, one. That'll create uh, a box right here and I'm going to connect them with lines. I'm also going to drag. All right. So how do I make a polygon? A polygon takes a list of points. I don't know how to grab it out of the table. I don't know how to grab the values out of the table uh, because it doesn't let me like label the table here. 
maybe in the comments somebody could let me know how to label a table of values but you could just type the word polygon in but also if you go to functions and go down near the bottom geometry right here we have polygon so I'm gonna hit polygon now what goes inside of this is a list I'm just gonna call it L for now and we have to create a list to create a list above it. And I think the order does matter. So my list is called L. Now the syntax is square brackets and then inside are gonna be points. And I'm gonna put these points, the initial values that I have in my table above and here. I don't know a fast way to get these values in besides just typing them. And in a minute, we're gonna play around and change the values and then type in the changed values but I want you to see what this looks like. All right, let's zoom in even further. So look at the purple first, the order matters. And if you look, uh, it goes first point is lower left, upper left, lower right, upper right. And if I build a polygon in this order, what the polygon is going to look like is a bow tie. That may not be what you want. If you wanted a box, the order is super important. So I'm gonna make that invisible and we're gonna go back and look at the points. All right, so I wanna turn this into a box. So this point right here, now what I've turned on, I don't think it was on by default, is I turned on drag. And what that lets me do is drag the points around. So I need this point to be up top and that's to be at the bottom. So the order is really important. Uh, hopefully you can see what value is. If I really wanted them to be precise, that would be a one. That would be a one, one, zero. All right, now the order is correct. So I'm just gonna edit. I should have gone one, one, and then one, zero. And now I fill it in and you see it's filled in. All right, the right uh, order. Okay, so I, don't want it to look like that. Uh, I want to make some design and you may want to make a design that has more than four points, but I just wanted to stick to the most simple one where order mattered. The reason triangles don't matter in order is because you can't uh, have like a, that bow tie behavior on a triangle. That would be three vertices or three points. So if you have four points or more, the order is really important. Okay. If I wanted to make a five, uh, five vertex or six vertex, I just go into my table and I just do uh, two, two. So yeah, let's go ahead and we'll do, we'll do a five vertices shape here. All right, now I'm just gonna drag these around until they're in some configuration that I like. And I am not using a reference image of Saturn. So I know there's some, like there's like a dark spot on it. I'm just making things up. I don't know anything about astronomy. Uh, Saturn is quite cool. And I heard there's so lots of moons and stuff, but all right, I'm just gonna make this weird shape like this. Now, when I turn this into a polygon, the first and last point are gonna be connected right here. So there's gonna be an extra, an extra edge in here. All right, it's important that you get these points to where you want them and also what is also important is that I centered the original X and Y of Saturn on zero, zero, because if they're not centered at zero, zero, uh, when you do the next step, the offset won't really come through nicely. So do make sure that you center your object at zero, zero. All right, so we have our five points. Now I'm gonna type them in down here. Let me get a few more. Okay, first point is negative 0.93, comma, negative 0 0.04, zero, 0.04, with a negative, having a lot of trouble typing. All right, so I just copy that first value right there. You can do copy and paste, reasonable. All right. 
right, this third point, ooh, almost 007. All right, there is a fifth point, so I'm doing comma, another parentheses, negative 1.084, comma, 1.485, parentheses, nope, no question mark, just parentheses. All right, so that's my list, and you can make that invisible, just make sure that those points are in the right spot. Looks like they're good. So I'm gonna make the original points invisible, and I'm gonna draw the polygon. I don't need to make these points visible anymore. Now what I did for my polygon, I just did no line on the outside and I filled it all the way in with a one. So it's fully opaque. All right, now if you do wanna make modifications to this, it's a little bit of a pain. Uh, once you start moving it, forget about it but let's say I just wanted to move this one over a tiny bit maybe to there now notice what changed it's the fourth point so the fourth point is negative point five comma one point six six all right there we go so that'll be invisible okay so so far so good now just remember there's two, there's the list and the polygon that both need to go together. Uh, looks like the order doesn't matter, but I would I keep the list before the polygon. So I wanna push both of these. Now notice Saturn's open right now and the table is not inside of Saturn at the moment. I'm about to push the table inside Saturn, not the table, the polygon on the list inside Saturn. So you see, uh, Right here is the end, so I'm going to push L in there and the polygon in there. All right, this also is nice if you're going to make other planets, lets you hide an entire planet at one time. Um, and also collapse it down so things get compact. All right, so we're almost there, except when I move this, notice that thing doesn't move. Okay. Oh, I also meant to. Oh, yeah, yo. I also meant to have this last point go down below somewhere like that. And that was negative 1.88. That was my Y coordinate of the first point. Okay. Good enough. All right, so the order matters. You see right here, I need the polygon to be drawn. Uh, I need it below Saturn, but above the ring right there. Now the order is good to go. All right, except it doesn't move with these. All right, so how do we fix that? It's pretty easy to fix. All we need to do is add the offset, SX and SY. Now you might be thinking, oh, it should be minus S sub X because that's how we did the other ones. But this is actually gonna be plus. You need to add this offset. Um, it's kind of hard to explain why this is plus and not minus, uh, but it just is. So plus X S plus S sub Y plus S sub X plus S sub Y plus S X plus S Y. You could do some copy pasting for all the SXs, copy pasting for all the SYs. Uh, but typing also makes you faster at typing. Uh, I am not a perfect example of being fast at typing. But, no. Oh. Plus S sub Y. Okay. So now it should. There we go. Move around. And if you forgot to put one of these right here, uh, look at that. That may be something you're going for. And you can see what happens if, if the order changes, you get that weird kind of bow tie uh, happening right there. Okay, plus SY. All right. There you have Saturn.
uh, with even better rings than I originally had because it meshes perfectly behind. You have it in a nice folder right here and you're ready to go and do other stuff. So hopefully this was helpful and I can collapse Saturn down. Now, if you have a Desmos account, you can hit save. Otherwise you wanna hit the share graph. That'll give you a URL that you can copy. And as long as you have that URL, you can load this back up where you left off. Just make sure anytime you make a change that you want to keep, you share graph and then copy that URL. And I'll put the original URL down below in the comments for the video.